This video aims to help telescope beginners go beyond just the bright moon and planets and find much fainter deep sky objects such as globular clusters, open star clusters, nebulae, and galaxies. The video is particularly designed to assist astronomers using simple non-tracking Dobsonian telescopes. I assume you have already watched the Brisbane Astronomical Society introductory video titled, Dobsonian Telescope for Beginners, and you understand how to set up your telescope and align the finderscope. You should also watch our video titled, Beyond the City, Deep Sky Astronomy, to better understand how telescope observing a deep sky objects is severely impacted by urban light pollution. I also assume you are prepared to take your telescope to a rural dark sky location well away from city light pollution. This video will show you how to us a planetarium app called Stellarium to pick suitable objects to observe. I'll then show you the star hopping method to navigate your telescope to your target object. First, I suggest you download the free Stellarium app to a tablet or laptop. Smartphone screens are too small to allow easy use of the app, so I recommend using a tablet or laptop. I'll now run through how to configure the app and use it. For an astronomy beginner, you just need the app to do the basics. Once Stellarium is installed and operating, move your cursor to the left side of the screen and the main controls menu displays. The first control is the location window. Click your location on the map. A red arrow displays and a list of nearby cities and town is displayed. Find your nearest listed city and click it. The latitude and longitude are entered and saved. You can enable, or disable, daylight saving time too if you want. The next control is date and time. They are easy to adjust. The celestial display of stars and constellations changes accordingly. The next control is sky and viewing options. This is more complicated. I suggest you start simply. There are seven different menus you can explore. Start with the sky menu. Click to display the Milky Way. Click to display stars and set the apparent magnitude limit to about 8.0 so Stellarium does not flood the screen with too many stars. The next menu function is Solar System Objects. Tick boxes as shown to display the planets and their paths across the sky. Next is controls for displaying deep sky objects. At the top of the menu is an extensive list of astronomical catalogues. Click M for the Charles Messier catalog and NGC for the new general catalog. These catalog list 110 and 7840 objects respectively. Below, click the boxes as displayed. This will limit the objects displayed in Stellarium to just those best suited to beginners, in this case open star clusters, globular clusters and bright nebulae. Click to display their labels. Set the magnitude limit to about 9. This will ensure Stellarium only displays objects you should be able to find and observe with your telescope. The next menu is Celestial Navigation Markings. Click the highlighted boxes to help you navigate across the sky. Next, click Landscape and click to display the ground. This will save you time needlessly searching for objects currently below the horizon. Next, click the Sky Culture menu. I suggest you initially click the options highlighted. This will help you build a better understanding of what the constellations look like and why they were named. We don't need to surveys menu at this time. The next menu is search. Enter the name of catalog number of a specific object you with to display. The next menu is the configuration window. Click information. This lets you specify the extent of information displayed on screen when you mouse click a star or deep sky object. Keep it simple for now and click these few highlighted boxes. Now click Tools and click the highlighted boxes to allow keyboard and mouse navigation of the app. If you move your cursor to the bottom left of the screen, another menu bar appears. Essentially, these are toggle switches that allow you to quickly turn some display options on and off. Options such as the constellation lines and names. The last control on the right is the Quit button to turn Stellarium off. You can control Stellarium using your mouse and the on-screen menus. Plus, there are many keyboard shortcut functions to perform most tasks. The most useful are the page up and page down keys which control the zoom in and out scale of the displayed sky. If you go to the help menu and open it, a list of keyboard shortcuts is available. Finally, we are ready to learn how to find and observe some deep sky objects. Look at the displayed sky. In this case the Southern Cross constellation is in the center. You will see many yellow markers. The circles with center cross identify globular clusters. The dotted circles mark open star clusters. The bigger the marker the brighter, and thus lower apparent magnitude number. Bright objects are where you should start. All these objects should have apparent magnitude of 9 or brighter, as that is what we specified earlier. Globular clusters are excellent targets for beginners as you pretty much know when you have placed one in your eyepiece field of view. Their fuzzy round blob shape is very distinctive. So, I suggest you begin your deep sky journey by hunting globular clusters. Navigating to a target principally relies upon finderscope skills and some mental gymnastics. 
I'll now show you how to find some targets near the Southern Cross. You will need your telescope set up in a dark rural location and using a wide field eyepiece such as a 25mm. This needs to be a date and time when Stellarium tells you the Southern Cross is high in the southern sky. Center the Southern Cross constellation, Crux, in Stellarium. The large yellow marker for the globular cluster Omega Centauri is prominently displayed nearby. Now look for the Southern Cross in the night sky. It should be easy to recognize towards the south. Stellarium shows you that the Omega Centauri cluster sits about halfway along the hypotenuse of a large right-angled triangle of stars near the Southern Cross. Now do a naked eye search for that triangle of stars in the sky. The brightest star at the bottom of the hypotenuse, called Alnair, is the best starting point for star hopping. At this date and time, the Omega Centauri cluster sits vertically above Alnair. Aim your finderscope at Alnair. Once you have Alnair centered in the finderscope, keep looking through the finderscope and nudge the telescope upwards. If you are lucky, the fuzzy blob of the globular cluster will appear in the finderscope. If it does, it will now also be centered in the telescope eyepiece. If you don't find Omega Centauri cluster in the finderscope, realign on Alnair and repeat the process. You need to create a mental map of where your target is relative to a star hopping star and gauge if you are pushing the telescope in the correct direction. This just takes practice. While I suggest beginning your deep sky learning curve by hunting globular clusters, the winter months, particularly when the Sagittarius constellation is high overhead, provide the greatest number of globular clusters to hunt down. So now, let's find the jewel box open cluster beside the Southern Cross. Stellarium shows the jewel box is very close to the star Mimosa, on the left arm of the cross. Start by centering the finderscope on the star Mimosa. The little cluster of jewel box stars may already be visible in the finderscope. If not, keep looking through the finderscope and nudge the telescope down and a little in the direction of the brightest star of the cross. A small bright group of stars should come into view. Center in the finderscope and it will be visible in the telescope eyepiece. However, not all star hopping is this easy. Sometimes your target object is well away from the bright star you select as your star hopping commencement point. In these cases you will need to use some intermediate stars, or groups of stars, to lead you step by step to your ultimate target. This is where good finderscope skills are required. In the period April, May, June, the constellation Leo will be in the southern hemisphere northern sky. This is a great time to hunt galaxies. To display galaxies on Stellarium, open the sky viewing options menu and click DSO. Click to highlight the filter options to display galaxies. Adjust the hint slider to display more or fewer galaxies. Galaxies will now be displayed as small red ovals. The Leo constellation is easy to recognize. Just above Leo's rear legs are a triplet of galaxies worth observing. Using your finderscope, you might start by finding the bright star Denebola. Then slide your telescope horizontally to find the star Chertan. If you zoom in on Stellarium you will find three stars in a row above Chertan and close to the galaxies. Still looking through the finderscope, slide your telescope up a little and center the three stars. Now nudge the telescope a little to the right. Now look through the telescope eyepiece and very gently nudge to bring the small fuzzy galaxies into the center field of view. If you want to, you can now swap eyepieces to increase magnification. You have just star hopped to galaxies about 45 million light years away. However, star hopping can require some mental gymnastics as finderscopes and telescopes can flip what you see naked eye, and on the Stellarium display, upside down and even upside down and mirrored left to right. Observing the moon can make these flips obvious for your equipment. But, to make star hopping less mind-bending, you can flip the Stellarium display to match the orientation of groups of stars you are looking at through your finderscope and telescope. This can make it easier to recognize the intermediate stars you are seeking with each step in a star hopping route. To quickly flip the Stellarium display, use these shortcuts. Ctrl plus Shift then H for a horizontal flip, and Ctrl plus Shift then V for a vertical flip. Flipping the display can make it much easier to mentally visualize the path you need to nudge your telescope to follow a star hopping route. Star hopping to faint deep sky objects just takes practice. As you get better at it you might expand your target list to include every category of object and fainter magnitude objects. The Stellarium, Sky Viewing Options menu and DSO controls can prompt you with vastly more targets than you will ever have time to find. So, get out of the city light pollution bubble. Load up Stellarium and start deep sky star hopping.